today we continue with our chapter topic 2 uh, subtopic 2.2 regarding user view in this chapter we learn about file system we learn about how the operating system uh, managing the our file and directory and how the OS allocate the file into the uh, storage devices what is file system a file system is a method that the OS used to store, record, and retrieve file by manage the directory. Okay, uh, and a file system reside permanently on secondary storage. If you can see here, I underline the permanently on secondary storage. As you know that the storage can be divided into two a primary storage and secondary storage. A primary storage is a volatile or fixed storage such as our random access memory, WAM, our ROM and our cache. That is the primary storage. The secondary storage is more like the external hard disk or uh, uh, the flash drive and uh, previously we have floppy disk and so far okay so if we create a file and then we try to store or save the file the file is actually reside or safe in the secondary storage so in this file system chapter we will learn on how how the, the structure looks like and how the open system store our file in the hard disk this is the the general or the standard directory structure we have directory for example we have c drive in our c drive we have we have another directory for example program files and windows uh windows directory and uh, inside the windows directory we have another file okay these are the general operating system uh, uh, structure okay if you look here in this pc we have c drive and then we have several uh, folder or, or directory and then inside the directory we have another directory okay another directory and then inside the directory we have a files okay for example here all right these are the file system concept in uh, file system imagine that you have a application an application program uh, such as uh, microsoft word and then you have create your assignment and then you want you try to save your assignment in in your hard disk or flash drive what happened is your assignment will be managed by uh, what we call is what we call it as logical file system first and then kita punya file tu is contoh size dia dalam uh, 20 megabyte what's happen is in logical file system it will store or it will capture the metadata information of the system for example assignment ni tadi file assignment contoh assignment.docx uh, berapa size dia and then bila uh, files tu dia buat Okay, siapa yang buat dia itu kita panggil metadata information and then uh, this file sebelum dia allocate ke dalam hard disk dia akan dipecahkan kepada kita panggil blok-blok kecil okay for example saiz kita bersaiz uh, 10 meg and then file uh, macam mana kita nak store dalam hard disk ialah file ni akan dipecahkan kepada blok-blok kecil and then dekat situ uh, siapa yang akan handle is file organization module okay this file organization module will know about the files and then where is the logical block okay uh, contoh tadi kita dah pecah kan kan uh, file tadi kepada beberapa block so uh, file organization module ni akan akan uh, mengetahui ya akan 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 tahu uh, pecahan file ni dan 
uh, the logic, logical location dia dekat mana Okay, yang tu nanti kita akan lihat uh, uh, di section seterusnya Okay, uh, during the organization module ni juga Let's say, kita punya file tadi 10 max And then dia akan check dekat hard disk kita eh Ada tak free space? Okay, free space dekat hard disk kita Okay, file ni 10 max Okay, kalau ada then dia allocate Kalau tak ada then dia akan bagi tahu yang hard disk uh, full ataupun there is no space uh, Okay, so itu itu siapa yang handle is file organization module And then seterusnya, uh, basic file system will manage the white uh, uh, white the physical block on the disk Okay, tadi kita logical, logical ni dia macam apa, dia dia belum real lagi, betul tak? Dia, bu dia bukan physical, dia logical. Dia ialah macam uh, planning saja, okay? File ni tadi nak dipecahkan kepada 20 blok. 20 blok ni akan di-allocate di sekian-sekian tempat, okay? Ha, itu logical. Ha, okay, uh, file organization pula tadi dia akan check, uh, okay? Apa logical blok dia, apa physical blok dia. Uh, ada tak free space? Ha, macam tu eh. Bila masuk ke basic file system ni, uh, kat sini lah file tadi tu dia akan wipe terus ke dalam device kita. Device kita dekat sini, hard disk lah. Okay. But before that, uh, system call will trigger eh, yang ni kita dah belajar dekat chapter chapter 2.1, uh, chapter 1. Okay. System call will trigger the I.O. control, eh, input output control. Okay to manage atau to read or write the data tadi tu ke dalam hard disk kita ok, yang ni kita dah belajar eh uh, siapa yang control kita punya komponen ni ialah uh, system call so, macam tu ok, uh, so tu dia macam mana file kita disimpan di dalam hard disk it start with application program Microsoft Word, you work Simon and then by the time you nak save tu, that's why by the time you nak save tu, you akan rasa macam dia lambat sikit and saving dia tu lambat sikit and loading dia sebab dekat situ dia ada beberapa step yang dia perlu lalui. Okay, so tu dia file system concept. Alright, di dalam file system concept, ada terdapat beberapa ataupun it consists of few other concept eh? for example we have file attributes okay we have file attributes what is attributes attribute of course is the characteristic of the file okay for example the file must have a name an identifier uh, what the type of the file whether it's sound audio is a jpeg or picture or is a video Okay, the location of the file, the size of the file, protection, time and date as I mentioned just now. Alright, that is the file attribute. That's why you can see any of the file must have all these attributes or properties. For example, we have this file and then we, we check the properties and then we, we have all these location, size, size on this created date modified type and name okay if you if you can see your file properties you will get what i mean by file attributes here okay so what is this okay there's two types of uh, files uh, different file for example in unix or linux these are the file the file the file attributes looks like okay normally they will have the permission okay you can see the permission the ownership or the the file name the group the size the date and the file name okay file name okay this this can be different okay the will is the name uh, will will here is the name and then will for example james will they they put the name of the file as will so these are the file attribute in unix and then these are the file attribute of windows like i i showed you just now all right okay these are for the windows part all right so 
Okay, we will, we will look at what is permission uh, more detail in the next section. Okay, the second one is file operation. There are six different operations that can be performed on a file, which is we can create a file, we can write, write or execute the file, we can only read the file, read position, delete and truncate the file. Okay, in Windows, you always can right click your file and then you can do whatever you want to do, like we see just now. For example, here we can read only and then we can right click, we can delete the file, we can copy the file, and we can cut the file, and then we can rename the file. That's what we call as the file operation, and then we can change to read and write permission just now. This and then you can set read only. Read only means people cannot be able to. For example, if, if this if this file is a word file, if you if you can set the read only or hidden, you only can see or view the file. You cannot delete. You cannot edit the file. That's what we call as read only. Alright. So that is the file operation. Okay. Next, we have file types. File type is nothing but the the type of the the file that we we we, we discussed just now. Whether it's a text file, it's a executable file dot exe. Normally, it's a program file. If you download a software, normally you can see the file extension is exe because it it is executable file. And then we have batch bat, which has word processing, uh, doc, rtf, and then we have another file of another type of file a file has certain has a certain defined structure according to its type name of the file is split into two parts the name and the extension for example uitm.jpg okay uitm is the name jpg is the extension name all right so that is the file types okay in the file system there, there, there are two types of access method. One is sequential. One is another one is random access. Okay, an access method describes the manner or mechanism by which a process access the data in a file. There are two common access method. The first one is sequential access. Sequential access is nothing but how we can uh, process the file in order. Okay. Or uh, how the how the hard disk can read the file, okay, directly or uh, in order, okay, from one to another, okay, from one to another. The file is read and written sequen sequentially, starting at the beginning of the file and moving to the end. OS use the address of the last byte read to access the next sequential record. Therefore, the current byte address must be updated every time a re record is accessed. Okay, this will cause a poor performance for searching, update, and queries. Okay, so do you do you mean what do you know what it what does that mean? Okay, for example, you have an X, you have a file in your hard disk. It's located in C, uh, in C program files, uh, and then uh my assignment dot docx okay so whenever you want to try try to access the file okay once you double click the access the hard disk will will find will find your file uh, your operating system will try to find your file in the hard disk okay uh, and then your file uh, is divided into several blocks okay several blocks Okay, for example, you have 10 megabyte file and then it, it divided into another 20 or 30 blocks. And that, and that 20 or 30 blocks will be accessed directly from one to another. For example, okay, uh, the operating system try to access the block number one. And then in the block number one, there must be a, there must be a, what we call it as address of the last byte okay 
must be the index or the address for the next byte okay all right um, uh, to allow the operating system to find the next block okay so dekat situ dia uh, dekat situ uh, setiap block ni dia mesti updated dia punya location and then dia punya next eh, next block punya location dekat situ uh, itu yang dikatakan dengan uh, itu yang menyebabkan uh, dikatakan menyebabkan poor performance for searching update and queries But because the file ya eh, dia sentiasa perlu update dia punya location uh, okay and then dia punya jiran dia atau next byte dia punya location so okay yang ni nanti kita akan lihat uh, dekat file allocation matrix ni okay so that is the sequential access the second one is direct access uh, compared to the sequential uh, access right dikatakan kaedah ini menyebabkan uh, is poor performance for searching update because uh, every block must uh, update every time every time a record is access eh nak access dia dia kena update dia punya code location that's why kita bila kita buka word dia rasa macam lambat je kan macam tu eh so dekat situ dia kata ada drawback lah so how to overcome the drawback is by using direct access uh, ataupun random access macam tu eh uh, direct access allow random access to any file block okay this method is based on a this model of a file it allow program to read and write record rapidly okay rapidly in no particular order this method generally involve the construction of an index for the files example direct access storage device for the hard disk okay this is this is another method to access the file block kan tadi so tadi kalau kita tengok satu file word document 10 megabyte dia pecah kepada block and then dia susun blok-blok tu sebelah menyebelah okay and then dia sequen sequential eh secara sebelah menyebelah tetapi bila mana kita nak access dia okay bila mana kita nak access dia uh, dia akan dia akan update dulu location dia tu menyebabkan dia lambat okay poor performance so uh, new technology comes in uh, that allow uh, that block tadi tu dia tidak dia tidak uh, dia tidak secara sequential dia random so bila mana dia tidak sequential mak maksudnya setiap blok tu dia, dia, dia tidak perlu ada uh, index sorry dia tidak ada dia tidak perlu tahu number jiran dia tau okey so macam mana dia nak tahu daripada 1 jam ke 2 2 jam to uh, ke 3 3 jam ke 4 macam mana nak tahu is dia ada table kat sini eh. dia ada uh, index table kat sini okey yang tu nanti kita akan lihat uh, nanti in the next session so just to know that for now in file system there are two access method which is sequential access and random access okey okey next we looking at the directory structure directory structure all right so this is the simple one okay di, ini yang biasa kita nampak okay kita nampak ini directory okay dekat C kita ada directory and then kita tengok eh alright all modern OS have adopted the hierarchical directory model to represent collection of files a directory itself contain information about the file including attributes location and ownership uh, ini maksudnya setiap folder tu sendiri bila kita right click kita akan dapat tahu siapa yang buat uh, berapa saiz dia apa nama dia macam tu eh bila date created itu maksudnya dengan attribute of the file okey uh, the types of operation that may be performed on the directory are searching create a file delete a file rename and list of directory ini uh, contoh kita ada dekat C okey dalam C kita ada folder docs app dengan DOS dekat apps application ni kita ada squid kita ada games okey remember dekat kelas remember dekat kelas 
uh, lab hari tu kita dah buat command line betul tak kita uh, nak tengok directory kita type dir kan okay. so dalam tu ada directory okey dekat linux kita type ls untuk listkan directory so tu dia eh, kita boleh listkan semua file yang ada dalam directory dan kita nampak directory structure kita betul tak alright directory structure ada beberapa jenis eh? we have single level directory and then we have two level directory and then kita ada three structure directory so now kita tengok single level directory is single level directory is simple directory structure all files are contained in the same directory uh, the disadvantage of this uh, single level is not suitable for a large number of file and more than one user and file require require unique file name this is uh, you imagine you are the c file and then semua ada uh, ada you ada c file dalam c file you ada satu je folder contohnya program files and then semua file dekat dalam program files tu okay so it's not a good solution lah kan betul tak alright and then uh, we have two level directory two level directory uh whereby each user has its has his own directory it is called user file directory uft each user file directory has a similar structure similar structure bermaksud uh, user one okay for example kat sini kita ada user one uh, kita ada user two user three user four okay this is uh kalau you pernah hmm, kalau you pernah tengok uh, kalau you pernah create profile dekat OS you kan kita bila OS kita terus ada uh, admin administrator betul and then kita kita login kita dapat C kita dapat program file dan folder folder kita okey imagine you create another profile okey you imagine a, so that will be your another user eh, user tu and then you create another profile for your adik your sister and then another file file for your brother uh, tu maksudnya okay so dekat situ everyone yang login to their own account will have the same structure of folder okay that is c that is d user 3 that is c that is d user 4 that is c that is d dalam okay and then cuma dalam uh, Uh, dalam uh, dalam folder masing-masing lihatlah kalau user 1 ada dekat D drive dia ada empat folder user 2 dia create another two folder tapi structure tu sama alright structure tu sama okey tu maksudnya dengan each user file directory has a similar structure different user may have file with the same name as long as all the file name with within each UFT are unique for example uh, user 1 dia ada D drive and then dalam D drive dia dia buat uh, folder nama dia test okay user 2 pula uh, sorry user 3 pula dia login dia pergi kat D drive dia dia pun buat folder nama D drive uh, test so folder ni sama tapi dia masih di dalam account masing-masing eh, itu dimasukkan dengan may have the the same file name okay so this is very simple we can you can directly read and understand it os cannot accidentally delete another user's file that has the same name because os must confine the search to the local uft local us uft maksudnya uh, local account eh? maksudnya setiap user dia log in to their own account then they only can manage their own account folder and files so tu maksudnya So, tree structure directory pula, contoh uh, tree structure directory is MS-DOS ataupun Microsoft Disk Operating System. Alright, dalam MS-DOS, dia menggunakan, uh, dia using the tree structure directory. It allow user to create their own site directory and to organize their files accordingly. A site directory contains a set of files and subdirectory. Okay, ini contoh uh, tree structured directory. Okay, kalau you buka MS DOS, you command line, you can easily create folder. Dalam folder ada file. You can create folder dalam folder ada file. So, okay. Um, tapi MS DOS kat sini, kalau kita nampak bin, 
file root ni macam it refers to linux okey dalam linux okey the dia punya main folder is kita panggil root dalam root tu dia ada bin ataupun binary dalam binary kita Lepas tu dia ada sistem binary, sbin dan dia ada program dan sebagainya. So, dekat Linux atau MS-DOS, ok, yang dulu-dulu tu, ok, mereka menggunakan uh, menggunakan kaedah ini, ok. As long as it's twist structure, it's fine. Ok, so mereka tak ada macam konsep user ni tadi. Alright. The last one, I think the last one, oh not. Ok. Another, 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 another directory structure is a cyclic graph directory, a cyclic graph directory. Uh, dekat sini juga kita nampak macam uh, dia play dekat, uh, de uh, sorry, dia, dia ada dekat Linux. It allow directory to have shared subdirectory, shared subdirectory and file means that, for example, uh, these are two different folder dictionary ataupun dictionary and spell dalam dictionary sepatutnya dia ada folder list all w count tapi dalam spell ni juga dia ada folder yang sama count so whether then dia ada separate files why not they shared the files okay so this this only can happen in a cyclic graph that tree in linux okay okay shared files and side directory can be implemented by using links and a, and a cyclic graph that tree structure is more flexible okay then it's simple tree structure but sometimes it's more complex okay they're flexible sebab uh the file tu kita boleh share okay tapi dia boleh jadi complex bila mana you create for example in spell you have 10 folder Dalam 10 folder ni, you ada another 5 folder and then kat sini dah ada, you ada 2 folder and then you share the file. So, it, it will become more complex. Okay, to a cyclic. The next one is path and directory. Okay, ni yang uh, saya cerita tadi dekat Unix eh. Uh, most of Unix file system is laid out as a hierarchical tree structure which is anchored at a special top level known as a root ok ok dalam uh, linux punya environment atau unit punya environment tu orang uh, punya master folder tu kita panggil root dalam root tu dia ada banyak folder lain ok dia macam tak berapa tersusun ok kita akan nampak macam serabut ah, macam tu eh ah. Okay, so, so to Linux, okay. Because of the tree structure, the directory can have many child directory, but only one parent directory. You okay? Satu concept tree structure ni, the parent and child, okay. Satu parent may have many child macam ni, eh. Ah, uh, okay. Contoh kalau B ni dia dah tak ada tak ada sub directory, it's fine lah. Semua file ada dalam bin, betul lah. Tapi kalau dalam home ni dia ada dia ada lagi sub directory jane will and zap dalam will dia ada lagi work and play so work and play ni parent dia ialah will will ni parent dia ialah home alright so two path and directory okay so dekat dalam unix biasa kita akan list kita akan menggunakan ls to list all the directories and then uh, kita access directory yang kita nak masuk and then kita buat list lagi untuk tengok ada tak dia side directory dan sebagainya. Okay. So, tu dia uh, directory structure. Okay. Next, kita masuk file system mounting. Okay. So, tadi kita dah lihat uh, directory uh, macam mana file to the save. Okay. Kita tengok macam mana nak access file kita ada dua method kita ada direct access kita ada random access kita ada structure of directory kita ada tree kita ada single directory and now kita lihat pula uh, uh, ataupun kita kena tahu yang before we can save ataupun uh, uh, before we can save the file inside the uh, the, the disk 
we need to mount tick first okay so macam mana nak mount tu ha, so tu kita panggil file mount file system mounting okay file system must be mounted before it can be accessed mounted kat sini dia macam macam kita macam kita macam save atau kita kat, macam macam kita execute atau tulis dia dekat hard disk untuk simpan dia ada macam tu eh mounted okey mount mount point is the location within the file structure where the file system is to be attached the procedure mounting file system as follows okay os is given the name of the device and the location within the file structure at which to attach the file system ataupun kita panggil mount, mounting point okay and then the os tadi bila dia dah dapat okay let's say kita nak kita nak beritahu OS, OS, saya nak simpan fail ni, okay, and then logical structure, uh, and then uh, the log, uh, organi organization management uh, file system tu tadi akan bagi tahu location, okay, di dalam file structure, contohnya kita nak simpan dia di dalam folder C, program file, macam tu eh, so kita akan bagi tahu location dia dulu, eh, and then uh, kat situ lah kita punya mounting point dia. Okay, and then OS, bila dia, 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 dia tahu kita nak simpan di dalam C, program files, dia akan verify eh, whether the, div, uh, the device contain that folder or not. Okay, OS will check adakah C folder ni ada, uh, folder program file ni ada, size dia available, uh, so the, the, the folder is considered valid or not. Okay, kalau the valid, Okay, dia akan mounted lah ke dalam folder tersebut. Okay, mounted at the specific mounting point. Okay, once dia dah mounted, dia macam, dia macam execute eh, the saving tu dia execute dekat dalam hard disk kita tu. Okay, uh, so dekat situ dia dah macam buat torehan dekat hard disk kita punya surface tu and then kat situ lah location of our file. So, okay. Okay, so to the file system mounting. Okay, we continue with file sharing is is nothing but how we can share our file to um, other people. So, okay, file sharing can either allow a user to access the files of other users by default, or it may require the that a user specifically grant access to the file. File sharing may be may be done through a protection scheme. Okay, and then uh, kalau kat sini, there must be an owner ataupun a group of people that we allow them to access. Okay, for example, here, let's say we have this folder and then this folder I want to share. Okay, right click and then share. Okay. If you can see here, once you click share, there must be an owner and okay, and then you, you need to create a group of user, okay, a group of user to, to give them access to the folder. So that's what we call as owner and a group of user, okay, right, and then you, you click access, but in order to, in order to share your folder normally uh, you need to set uh, a grant permission in a firewall level if not uh, the, the 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 other user cannot access your folder due to restriction in your operating system in your firewall okay that is file sharing okay these are the uh, most important part in this chapter which is file protection all right file protection is the mechanism uh, that provide the control access by limiting the type of file access that can be made by other people for example if you have a file you want to you have you have a file you can set the protection or permission of the file 
whether the other user can read only or can read or write on the file or can execute the file for example you you create a file to uh, installation file you need to allow them to execute to append to delete the file or to list the file okay these are the protection that you can set in your file if you if you set the read only the user only be able to read to op be able to open your file and then read your file for example powerpoint or word document file or pdf file but you do not be able to write on top of your file all right if you allow them to read write execute that means you allow them to edit your file and then uh, become their own file okay uh, become it's like uh, given the ownership of the file to them okay that's what we call it as, as file, uh, file protection if you can see here the file protection normally will be represented by rw rw and uh, x all right okay for example here all right this is what i i mentioned just now yeah you are the owner of the file okay uh, sorry if you want to set the the protection of the file you must set for this three access level the first one is the owner uh, and then the second one is the group and then the third one is for others okay access control for owner they uh, they must be the user who created the file and then the group is the set of user okay you can set of this set of user you can uh, specific specifically give the access to them okay and then others is all other user in the system okay next we could uh we look uh, in more detail in uh, in a file protection for example you have a you have a file in linux okay May, normally in linux you need to set the file permission all right for example if you let look at the properties of the if you look if you list a file it will show you something like this eh? something like uh, a set of attributes okay a set of attributes for example uh, you can see here for example you can see d r w x r okay and then x r x okay that will be your permission okay these are the links will is the owner of the owner of the file okay it can be your own name these are the group finance and these are the size of the file these are the date created and then these are the file name so in this case file system is the file system is the is the uh, the name okay and then these are the permission all right so if you can see in the permission d is represented the directory r represented the width access w y access x is the execute access r is the win access and so forth right okay so in this file for example in this file how to know the permission of uh, this file okay it started with r w x okay meaning that the owner access is r w x meaning that the owner be able to read the owner be able to write the owner be able to execute and r w x is represented by one 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 in binary all right binary representation and then in decimal number it represented by seven 
okay and then um how about the group access group access is represented by r dash x the group access ataupun uh, kita panggil um user dalam group yang lain dalam user di dalam group finance ni hanya boleh lihat ataupun hanya boleh read okey dia boleh white tak dia tak boleh white tak boleh white bermaksud dia tidak boleh edit the file execute boleh tak dia boleh execute dia boleh run the file so dia for example contoh kalau file ni ialah docx so dia double click file ni Okay, then dia hanya boleh lihat, dia boleh baca dan dia boleh open. Dia boleh edit tak di OCX ni? Dia tidak boleh edit sebab dia dash kat sini. Ataupun kosong. Dia tak boleh. Okay. 101 ni, okay. Um, 101 is represented by 5. Okay, nanti kita tengok eh. Dia punya... Uh, table dia ada saya bagi table kat sini ok so kita sambung uh, untuk public ada dan user di dalam finance ni ok dia orang boleh buat apa sama juga dia orang boleh rx r-x meaning dia boleh read dia boleh write tak tak boleh dia boleh execute tak dia boleh execute so sama juga dia boleh baca sahaja so in summary untuk file ini, file system.docx, dia punya permission is 755. Okay, 755. Okay, jom kita tengok ada tak contoh. Hmm, 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 hmm. Alright, kat sini. Alright. So kat sini kalau dalam Windows kita boleh set dia macam ni lah. Full control, modified, read, execute. Kita boleh edit dia. Okay. Kita boleh edit dia. Alright. Kita boleh edit dia dekat sini. And nak execute or not deny. So kita boleh. Tetapi di dalam uh, Unix ah kita kena set dia dalam bentuk uh, macam ni. Alright. Kita, kita kena set dia RWX, R-X, R-X. Okay, so tu dia. Macam mana kita set permission on the file. Okay, so macam mana kita baca uh, file tu jadi 755 tadi tu. Ataupun boleh jadi DR, uh, RWX ni tadi. Okay, mana dapat 111 equal to 7. Okay, kita tengok kat sini. Uh, ni dia. Okay. R tadi tu, binary dia 100, W binary dia 101, sorry, 010, X tadi tu, 001, okay. 100 is represented by 421. So, kalau kita setkan R, W, X, R, X, R, X tadi tu, R, W, X, okay, dia akan represented by 111 is, is equal to 7. Eh, if we change the binary to decimal. Okay. 101 is represented by 5. 101 represented by 5. So, dia punya decimal dia 755. Dia punya binary 111 dan dia punya symbolic dia w, RWX dan seterusnya. So, tu dia. File permission. Alright. So, uh, we can discuss in this uh, later. If you have any question, you always can put a comment. Uh, okay, nanti. Okay, this are another of uh, example yang you boleh uh, tengok nanti. RWX is represented by 7. RWX, uh, group access, 6 represented by, uh, tengok lah kan. Uh, the represented by 110. So, dia akan jadi 761. Okay, this is another of protection. How to read the protection number. Okay. Next, kita tengok uh, file system. Okay, file system. Ia terbagi kepada 
ada ada banyak eh, sebenarnya ada FAT kita ada file allocation table eh FAT is stand for file allocation table NTFS is stand for net new technology file system and then EST is stand for extended FAT okay uh, right so these are the file system file system kalau kita tengok uh, macam mana nak tengok file system kita Okay, contoh saya pakai Windows. Okay, file system kita ialah NTFS. Okay, uh, new technology lah. It's the latest one. Okay, kalau C saya ni SSD, dia pakai NTFS juga. Alright, so let's say, kalau Linux, you you akan nampak yang lain lah. Let's say, kalau you nak format this drive, okay, you, biasanya kita file system kat sini, file system akan uh, keluar lah kat sini ya, kita nak. FAT32, NTFS, EXT, uh, Extended uh, Tapi of course, uh, these are the latest uh, laptop And then they tak allow FAT32 lah So, what are the different? Okay, antara uh, What are the different uh, between this uh, file system? Kalau kita tengok File system, it started with FAT12 Okay, FAT12 Kalau kat sini, dia cakap FAT16 kan Before that, we have FAT12 Apa beza dia? FAT12 atau FAT16 ni It use during the Windows 95 punya zaman Okay, contohnya MS-DOS dulu dia pakai FAT12 Kenapa FAT12? Apa beza dia? Kat sini sepatutnya dia ada uh, Apa beza dia? Ialah maximum file size yang setiap file system ni boleh cater Contohnya FAT16 ni dia hanya boleh support file size sehingga 2GB saja. Contoh kalau you ada file size contoh DVD you size 4GB, FAT16 dan ni dah tak boleh cover. Okey faham? So ini older version lah. Okey. So uh, next selepas Windows 95, Windows 98, Mi dan Mi dia dah pakai FAT32. Okey. FAT32 ni dia boleh cater maximum file size sehingga 4GB. Okey, 4GB. So uh, 4GB and then Uh, kat situ bila you dah boleh dah letak you punya hard disk eh, Sorry, hard disk pula You boleh letak you punya DVD kan uh, Sebab dia dah boleh fat tadi tu, tu Tak cukup dengan itu uh, Okay, Windows 2000 dan seterusnya Okay, NT, Windows NT 2000 XP Dia dia dah ada NTFS Okay, so NTFS Dia dah boleh cover sehingga exabyte dia, dia punya, maksudnya 16 dia boleh cover sehingga 16 exabyte which is size yang besar pun dia boleh cover lah ok, uh, ni memang dah latest teknologi lah, dia boleh cover berapa gig you letak pun size pun lah, uh, dia dah boleh cater, ok, so XP dulu dia masih lagi pakai FAT32, ok, uh, dah naik seterusnya kita dah pakai NTFS, so kat sini bermaksud NTFS is the latest one lah, ok EXT extended ni biasa dengan NTFS pun uh, dipakai dekat Linux Okay, so same goes to the Linux operating system Cumanya lain sedikit untuk uh, uh, Mac OS Mereka file system dia diorang pakai panggil FHS Okay, file hierarchical system Okay, FHS Okay, itu Mac OS So, untuk kita Windows ini, this are the file uh, system yang Windows operating system support. Kat mana nak tengok, you boleh tengok you punya hard disk. Okay, file system NTFS. So, tu dia. Okay, jom kita lihat uh, lebih mendalam tentang uh, file allocation table. FAT atau file allocation table refers to a data table that hold information about how and where file are stored. Okay, on any one partition which is single storage device may, may have one or several partition. Okay, ni yang uh, kita sebut uh, daripada awal tadi. Contohnya, kita ada satu file and then file tu kita nak allocate atau kita nak start eh, uh, dekat device kita, dekat hard disk kita. So, file tu tadi akan dipejah kepada beberapa blocks. Okay, dekat yang uh, beberapa blocks ni tadi dia akan uh, allocate kan dekat dalam hard disk betul tak? So macam mana kita nak tahu 
eh, location location of the setiap blocks tu so dia akan ada table okey table ya yeah. okey itu yang kita panggil sebagai file allocation table so nanti kita akan tengok ha, kat sini ada okey so tu dia file allocation table so siapa yang pakai uh, fat ni dia, bia, uh, dia biasa starting daripada MS DOS lagi tu okey ni yang tadi kita dah cerita eh MS DOS kita ada fat 16 kita ada fat 32 fat 64 dan latest kita ada anti fs so itu the file allocation table okey so now kita lihat bagaimana sesuatu data itu disimpan di dalam hard disk okey for example Uh, dia ada tiga cara okay. The first one is contiguous eh, Contiguous allocation The second one is kita panggil link allocation okay. The third one kita ada index allocation okay. First one kita ada contiguous Then kita ada link And then kita ada index allocation Ini di dalam FAT eh, FAT So cuba tengok macam mana contiguous ni Oh so contiguous Contiguous is uh, uh, Contiguous uh, uh, Contiguous allocation of the disk Is something like uh, Bila kita nak simpan when, when we try to allocate The block in a, sequ a Sequential manner Okay, kalau kita tengok kat sini Okay, kosong satu 6, 7, 14, 15, 16 So, contiguous mean Dia macam direct access uh, Sorry, dia macam direct sequential access tadi lah Okay, so tu maksudnya contiguous allocation Okay, so now Imagine you ada file Bernama count Count.docx So, you nak simpan file You ni tadi, okay So, apa yang berlaku ialah uh, File you ni akan dipecahkan Kepada beberapa blocks Okay, contohnya uh, Dua blok Count dipecah kepada dua blok So, macam mana nak simpan dekat dalam uh, This space tu Okay Location count ni dekat mana Location count ni It start with zero And then Size dia ialah tu So, count ni tadi akan pecah pada dua blok Start dekat kosong And then Uh, dia punya length ataupun dia punya sizing dia dua so kosong satu ataupun satu dua macam tu eh it start with zero and then length dia dua okay how about tr okay contoh you ada tr.pdf it start with 14 okay ni dalam hard disk eh uh, so dalam hard disk kita dia ada dia pecah kepada block block location block block location okay Count tadi tu dia dah locate dekat 01 TR tadi tu dia locate kat mana? Dia locate dekat 14 Okay Panjang dia berapa? 3 So 1, 2, 3 Same goes to your email Contoh you ada application email Email you dia simpan dekat mana? Start with 19 Panjang dia berapa? 4 1, 2 Sorry betul ke? Uh, mail Mail panjang dia 6 Okay 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 So, tu dia Okay, ini location mail Okay, okay list List.jpg contohnya uh, Location dia dekat mana lah hard disk Location dia the start with 28 Panjang dia 4 So, 1, 2, 3, 4 So, ni dia Location list tadi Email dekat sini So, imagine this are your hard disk Your hard disk will be divided into different different blocks. Okay, each block will have the same size, same size. Okay, then file awak ni tadi atau pikir file awak tadi dia akan pecahkan kepada beberapa blocks. Okay, it depends lah. Kalau contohnya mail you email file email you besar, kan? So dia pecah kepada 19 blocks. Then dia makan. Uh, sorry, dia dipecah kepada 6 blocks. Okay, dia makan 6 space block kat sini. Okay, so tu dia. Uh, so, bila mana you nak buka you punya email, hard disk you ni tadi akan cari location dia start with 19, 
Okay, dia dah jumpa 19 and then dia nak cari dia, dia, dia nak cari blok-blok lain sebab dia nak combine kan and then sebab dia nak baca satu email ya dia dikan satu email kan. Okay, imagine you have this email and then dia akan pecah pada beberapa blok kecil kan. Uh. So of course bila hard disk nak baca dia perlu assemble balik. Bila during the assemble tu, dia nak dia nak cari lah mana sub-sub block yang lain. Okay, so tu dia. So tu kita panggil contiguous allocation. Contiguous allocation ni, okay, uh, disebabkan dia berada sebelah menyebelah, dia dikatakan uh, advantage dia eh, it is very easy for the hard disk to read and access your file sebab dia sebelah menyebelah. Dia jumpa yang ni and then dia tu boleh dapat dia punya kawan and then dia boleh combine, dia boleh baca file tu. Betul tak? Okay. Tapi, problem kat sini, nampak you, dia kadang-kadang ada blank space kat sini kan. Kenapa ada blank space? Kenapa ada blank space? Sometimes, let's say, file ni, 6 ni, siapa? Okay, file F ni, kalau kita dah tak nak, kita akan delete dia, betul tak? Ha, that's why, bila kita delete dia, dia akan jadi blank space. Bila jadi blank space, you akan nampak banyak blank space kat sini then hard disk dia perlu cari eh dia perlu go one by one and then dia perlu uh, cari nombor 14 dan seterusnya sebagai contoh contoh lain bila ada blank space kat sini dia jadi in inefficient bila mana tiba-tiba ada satu file satu file yang memerlukan empat length empat length eh so kat sini you dah susah kan, betul tak? Nak susah nak cari uh, space, available space. Sebab ini tiga, ini dua. Betul tak? Okay. Uh, imagine you dah padam ni tadi kan. So, ini berapa? Satu, dua, tiga, empat, lima, enam, tujuh, lapan, sembilan, sepuluh, sebelah, dua belas. Ini dua belas space. Ini dua space. Ini tiga space. Next file, you perlukan empat space. So, apa yang diperlukan? OS perlu start. Ini kita panggil fragment eh. Fragment. Ingat? Uh, ingat tak kita uh, cara nak manage cara nak maintain di uh, maintain kita punya OS by defragment kan our hard disk betul tak uh, so apa maksud defragment tu uh, bila kita dah delete file dia tertinggal 2 space kat sini 3 space kat sini so dia dah jadi fragment fragment tu maksudnya ruang kosong unused space betul tak tapi tadi kita nak pakai 4 space punya file file e kita nak pakai spot space tak ada betul tak tak ada so kat situ kita perlu def that, itu perlunya deep fragment so dia akan susun balik 14 ni akan naik sini ha okey 19 akan naik sini ha, macam tu so dia akan susun cantik balik ha okay. so itu dia punya um, disadvantage lah eh ha dia the advantage dia senang access sebab Bila kita jumpa satu point, kita boleh jumpa next uh, block. Yeah. Uh, disadvantage dia, dia akan ada fragment, fragmented punya location in the hard disk. Uh, di mana kadang-kadang susah untuk kita nak simpan file kat situ. Uh, bila dia tak jumpa file yang kosong, dia dia perlu defragment sendiri. Eh. Bila dia defragment, uh, dia yang buat lambat. Uh, that's why kita kena bantu hard disk kita untuk defragmentkan dia. Okay. Okay, tu fungsinya defragmenting. Okay, so I think enough with the contiguous allocation. Okay, next kita tengok uh, link allocation ataupun chain. Chain eh, C-H-A-I-N uh, K-E-D eh, chain. Sorry, C-H-A-I-N-E-D <laughs> chain allocation. So, change allocation ni uh, macam mana pula? Kalau tadi dia susun cantik 0167 kan dia bagi start point dia akan bagi uh, length. Tapi kalau link apa yang link dia? Apa yang link dia ialah uh, dia akan bagi pointer. Uh, dia tak akan dia tak dia tak ada bagi dia tak tersusun rapat. Uh, macam tadi kita tengok 
uh, disebabkan dia susun uh, sequence sequentially okey dia, dia susun sequentially uh, dekat situ dia menyebabkan banyak ruang-ruang kosong bila file tu delete betul tak kan so macam mana nak overcome dia dia come up with link allocation link allocation ni uh, apa maksudnya okey link allocation ni dia akan jadi random okey dia akan jadi random scattered eh contohnya Uh, contoh, kita ada satu fail jeep, it start with 9, end with 25. Apa maksudnya? Kat sini, it start with 9. Okay, ni starting point dia. Okay, and then setiap block ni, dia akan ada pointer to the next block. Okay, contohnya, uh, untuk fail jeep ni, okay, start point, uh, start point dia, first block dia dekat 9 okey dekat dalam a uh, block 9 ni akan ada pointer okey pointer menunjukkan next pointer dia ialah 16 so dia pergi ke 16 OS tu akan cari okay. dia dah jumpa 16 okey kat sini dia ada pointer 16 ni dia akan pergi kepada 1 ah uh, macam tu daripada 1 ni dia pergi ke 10 And then 10 pergi kepada 25. So nampak dia start with 9 and with 25. And then setiap pointer ni ada uh, kita panggil story. Setiap block ada pointer yang menunjukkan ke mana dia nak pergi seterusnya. Okay. Kenapa dia buat macam ni? Sebab dia nak avoid daripada kalau kita ada uh, file seterusnya. Contohnya file F. Kita and then uh, hard disk tu simply dia boleh boleh dia boleh start dengan 2 for example and then dia pergi kepada 7 dan dia pergi ke 18 mana blok pula yang kosong so dekat sini dia tak perlu nak tunggu, nak tunggu defragmented kat sini dia tak perlu nak kosongkan ruang sebab dia boleh masuk mana-mana lokasi yang kosong so itu pasal dia buat scattered compared to sequential sebab dia nak overcome uh, masalah yang uh, kosong ni tadi Let's say dia perlukan 5 location. Dia akan cari sendiri. Location mana dia nak masuk secara random. So, dia tak perlu nak tunggu defragmented. Okay. So, tu yang dimasukkan dengan uh, this block. Okay. Sorry. Masukkan dengan link. Okay. Another. Oh, jap eh. Sebelum kita masuk index. Apa lagi yang ada dekat sini. Okay. Each block contains a pointer to the next block. Okay, of course, saya dah cerita tadi. Okay. Cumanya kat sini kan, uh, dia agak makan space sedikit. Okay, contohnya, let's say lah, each block ni ada 5, 1, 2 bytes. Okay. Daripada 5, 1, 2 bytes tu, 4 bytes tu diperlukan untuk allocate the pointer saja. So, dia, kita dah rugi 4 bytes kat sini. So, block size dia jadi 5, uh, 508 bytes. So, that's the only uh, disadvantage of uh, link. Okay, link allocation. Okay, so in order to avoid that, ataupun... Uh, Seterusnya, uh, the the modern operating system okay comes uh, with a what we call as index allocation. Apa apa beza index allocation dengan fat uh, link allocation dengan uh, contiguous contiguous uh, allocation ni? Index allocation dia lebih smart eh di mana each file has its own index block. Contohnya, you ada satu file jeep.jpg, gambar jpg. Okay. Macam biasalah, kita nak buka gambar jeep, OS kita perlu cari dekat dalam hard disk. Okay. Macam tadi, kita ada contiguous, kita ada links, betul tak? Yang perlu cari eh, daripada satu block ke another block. Dekat sini, apa cara yang digunakan ialah, untuk satu file tu, dia hanya ada index block nombor 19. Okay. Hard disk, OS hanya perlu baca block nombor 19. Okay. Dalam block nombor 19 ni, dia akan ada uh, 
nombor ataupun location blok-blok yang lain. Contohnya 90 ni dia ada 9 and then dia ada 16. Mana 16? Dia ada 11, dia ada 16. Oops, tak boleh lukis. Dan seterusnya. 